Hey guys. So I did a video um, a few days back or a week back about um, a, a version of this tool, a cheaper version of this tool. And I said, hey, I don't know anything about it, but maybe if someone tries it, they'll let me know. Well, someone commented and said, hey, it's on the way. I'm, I'm going to try it. So he ordered one. So I thought, you know what? If they don't know about the tool, they probably don't know how to use it. So I thought maybe I will do a quick demonstration of how to use this tool and why it's useful. So what I've got here is just a carrier out of a Data44, just standard carrier. This works for both carriers and pinion bearings. And you need to use this puller because shims are behind the, the bearings. And you need to be able to put the, the bearings on and off without damaging the, uh, the actual bearing itself. And that's difficult because the fattest part of the bearing on a caged roller bearing like this is where the rollers are. So... You need to be able to put those on and off to change shims and then, um, you know, check your adjustment and do it. So depending on how, you know, experienced you are, you might be putting bearings on and off 10 times. So you can't be destroying a bearing every single time. It would be, you know, a $2,000 bearing swap if you had to put every bearing on and off and ruin it 10 times. So the kit comes with these different little clamshells. You can see there's two different sizes. You've got big size and little size. So they, there's two sizes per clamshell, you know smaller and smaller and then you got this big one here and that's your big one i know that i've done aam 11 and a half axles using this kit so um, i know there might be um, parts for even bigger um, axles but you know i don't get into the real big stuff not in my career anyway so what you do is you take and you figure out with your clamshell you know which one is going to be the best fit around the base of the bearing down here I already know that it's this one for the Dana 44, but if you try one that's the wrong size, so let's pick this one, see that's too small. Um, it won't even see all the way down on there, and then this one's too big, and it's clearly too big. So what you do is make sure you have a race. Now, obviously, you can see there's tons of grind. This is just a carrier I have had sitting around. I would never run this as it is right now, but it's just for demonstration purposes. So what you'll do is, since this is not a pinion, there's nothing down in here for the puller to push on, so... That's where this slug comes in. You just drop this slug in, you know, either way. You want to make sure that this is, if you're going to use the fat end, it's smaller than the inner race of the bearing. Then you need your carrier or your uh, puller. I always forget to loosen the nut up because I go to slip. Ah, so take this and set it over there just like that. So once you've determined the size of the clamshell you need, and you have this sitting on here, you slide it around, and with one clamshell on, spin this upper nut up while you're holding it in place. You want you want this upper nut to be, see it's got like a, a tapered cut to the top of this nut, that's actually matching the taper here, okay? And what you want to do is make sure that you've got this is capturing the race against the bearing tightly by pulling upward with this nut okay so spin that up and that's as far as it's going to go then you take your other half slide it over then comes this dealy bobber now i've had this for a while and it, you know i've actually ended up breaking off this little tack welded nut so this is a new one that i've welded on at some point years ago slide it on normally you want the bolt to be you know opposing the uh the slit or where the two halves are it's just got to be finger tight you don't have to like tighten that down in fact you really it's only going to hurt and bend and damage things so that's on that's on everything's good and snug then it's just a matter of this No bearing on the carrier anymore, so we can loosen this up. Get that off. Get that off. So now your bearing is off, and it's intact. So now we've got the bearing off. Here are the carrier shims. You see these? 
These are your carrier shims. Now, as you're changing these out, this is what adjusts the backlash. So as you, you know, take a shim thickness from one side and move it to the other, it'll be moving the ring gear further away from the pinion gear. Now, I hate these, okay? I hate the carrier shims being behind the carrier bearing like this. So I recommend everyone who ever buys any kind of gear install kit to rather than get the shims that come like this, ask for super shims. Because what those are, are shims that are the size of the outside of the race. And so you can actually shim it on the outside of the carrier bearings instead. And that way you can um, just slide the carrier out, pop the shims out with the race, and put it back in. Um, so most people don't even know to ask for that. And so they'll usually get the cheapest install kit that they can find. And then... They get these shims, and then it's like, oh, no. I mean, I'm going to be putting the bearings on and off a million times. Hopefully, I have a tool, which now you can get one for $96. But I really recommend getting the Super Shim Kit, the shims that are the big size, not this size. Now, if you have that kit, you just take your shims out, press it all back together without shims, and you'll have shims on both sides. So if you look... There's shims behind this bearing too. So if you were going to, you could take these bearings off, take the shims out, press these bearings back on, or as if you're reusing these bearings, or if you want to put your new bearings on, now would be the time to put your new bearings on. And then use the super shims. Um, that would be what I recommend. Spend the extra 20 bucks, I'm telling you. Makes your life so much easier. And then, if for some reason, sometimes you're stacking shims and they just, they keep slipping out and it's a pain. You can't get them wedged in there. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll get it close since I have the tool and I will put a few shims, but not a, not a full shim thickness on the carrier side. So then all I have to do is play with the outers a little bit. That, that's things you start, you know, choosing to do after you've got some experience. Don't worry about doing stuff like that. Then it comes time to press the bearings back on. Now, do I need to do a video on how to press bearings on? Um, it's a, it's fairly self-explanatory, I think, but... Every time I think that, I, I get corrected. So, guys, let me know. Do I need to do a, bear, a video on how to press bearings on uh, for carriers and pinions? Okay, so I'm going to bring up at least the alternative that, you know, people are going to bring up and always bring up when it comes to setting up gears on the cheap is to get a sacrificial bearing and open up the inner race so that it just slips on and use it um, for doing your uh, test fit of, like, uh, pinion depth shims. And then you throw that bearing away and then press on your, you know, final use bearing. And the reason why you can't use the bearing you extracted if you don't have these tools is that you've destroyed the bearing by using a regular bearing puller or cutting it off. So you have to buy another pinion bearing. And those are like 30 bucks minimum most of the time. In fact, uh, I mentioned earlier in the video that I, you know, have done AAM 11 and a half um, axles. Have you ever priced out what the inner pinion bearing costs for an AAM 11 and a half as an example? Uh, it's like $120 for the one bearing. So, depending on your axle, you're spending 30 bucks minimum for that inner bearing and possibly even more. And we're talking about just for Chinese bearings. And in the case of the Dana 44 and others, where the carrier shims are captured, what are we going to you know, buy another two bearings on top of that to make sacrificial bearings? And companies like Yukon, they do offer a handful of fitments that are called setup bearings, which are actually just the bearings that you would normally use that are made by the manufacturer that are just the next size up in fitment. So they have the same outer race, but then the next size up inner race. So that's why they have a limited offering is it's just a bearing you could buy. But again, it's, you know, you have to spend money for them, um, a fair amount of money even. And the reason why this is important is that these bearings are hardened. You can't use like a file to file out the inside of these. You have to use like a carbide on a die grinder. I've done it. And when you're doing that, um, you're trying to take out, you know, two or three, you know, just a few thousands of an inch to make it slip on there. Well, guess what? Three or four thousandths is huge in gear setup. And so thousands of an inch in the pinion, if it's off-centered, just however you manage to get in there in your precise die grindering, um, that thousands of an inch is going to have that pinion be out of alignment thousands of an inch. And so your pinion depth will be inaccurate and the shims that you're using on the pinion to set pinion depth are thousands of an inch thick they're not you know an eighth of an inch thick they're 
They're thousands. You're making increment changes in just a, you know two or three thousandths most of the time. So I don't recommend grinding out and making a sacrificial bearing. Not to mention, it costs money to buy sacrificial bearings. And I like just doing it the right way if I can. And the tool's only 96 bucks. And then you have the right tool forever. And not only that, is my time is valuable. It's worth something to me. I, what is, is your time worthless to you? You would rather waste your own time to save a couple of bucks? I know that you're valuable enough to have valuable time. So, I mean, if you want to, like I said on my previous video, there's tons of videos on the internet about setting up gears. But I'm telling you that I know there's a better way. And you can do this on your own the right way with the right tools without having to do hack stuff like, you know, die grindering out bearings to um, check fitment, if that makes sense. Also, what I can tell you from my own experience is that if you're going to buy gears, um, if you buy Yukon gears or their sub-brand USA Standard gears for the Dana 44, most of the time, their pinion depth recommendation in their install booklet that comes with it is usually spot on for pinion depth. So the way they machine their gears seems to be um, seems to be right spec with the Dana Spicer manufacturing of housings. So again, pay a little extra money and get either the Yukon or their their uh, sister brand USA Standard, and it makes setting up even easier. Because I can tell you, I have set up I can't tell you how many because Jeeps always have Dana 44s and they come in everything. And I've used what the factory pinion shim recommendation was on Yukon gears more than 90% of the time. In fact, I can't even in my mind picture a time that I didn't, but I've done so many, I'm sure there were times that I didn't. So, um, yeah, I would definitely recommend um, getting Yukon or USA Standard. That's my own personal preference. Um, I have installed, actually, factory Dana Spicer gears. Uh, those set up pretty good too, but they're just not nearly as available. Um, I mean, I've got the Dana Spicer catalog right here. Um, back not that long ago, but when I had my shop, you know, I was a dealer for all these Dana Spicer, um, Yukon, Nitro, um, G2. And so, I mean, I've installed my fair share of gear brands, but I do prefer Yukon and or USA Standard. Thanks for watching.